The Department of Psychiatry at the Chinese University of Hong Kong has just been established for 30 years. Our department has a very strong surface base. This strong surface base has enabled us to develop solid skills in conducting clinical studies. We research disorders throughout the lifespan. Some of those include attention deficit hyperkinetic disorder, affective disorder like bipolar disorders and depression, sleep and circadian rhythm disorders, and also minor and major neurocognitive disorders in lay life. Most common uh, problems affecting uh, children and adolescents um, can be considered can be divided into the age groups. For young children, uh, like primary school age children, the most likely uh, referrals are because of problems of autism and problems of attention deficit problems. For adolescents, the more likely to be referred because of anxiety problems or depression. We have a multidisciplinary team here uh, consisting of uh, doctors, nurses, psychologists, um, social workers, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and also uh, special education teachers. In the elderly population in Hong Kong, most of them, most of them suffer from the uh, memory problems, such as um, the most common one is the Alzheimer's disease. According to our studies, um, the most important thing that leads to the neurocognitive disorder is the neurodegeneration in the brain. One of our research focus is on the genetic susceptibility for the aging disorder, such as Alzheimer's disease, and we can figure out some of the risk factors um, to provide some preventive measure for the aging population. The common sleep problem actually is insomnia, the difficulty in falling or maintaining sleep. Okay, so the other sleep disorder, for example, um, also disorder actually create um, hypersomnia. Okay, sleep apnea syndrome, narcolepsy. There's also a, a, a disorder called parasomnia. Our unit actually has done a lot of community-based projects from children to elderly. I think that helps give us some insight about the developmental perspective of, of healthy and sleep problems. We start to understand the sleep problem as a, as a crystal ball, okay, in predicting future new generations and particularly how the, the so-called interface of mood problem okay, may be part of this neurodegenerative course. Mm -hmm. So we start to uh, understand how sleep will affect the mental problem, for example depression, and how we can have, could we actually enhance sleep problem and help to improve the treatment outcome of, for example, depression. We have established a therapeutic physical mental exercise center at the Department of Psychiatry of the Chinese University of Hong Kong recently. And we believe that uh, exercise intervention have a special role for mood regulation and also for cognition. Because all of us are becoming aware that exercise has a strong impact on our mood state. Through this exercise center, we hope to develop evidence-based regime for treatment of mood disorders such as anxiety disorders and depression. So this therapeutic physical mental exercise center have a strong research component. We would conduct clinical trials to examine the optimal exercise schedule for different mental disorders and we are awaiting a lot of international collaboration in this area. Well this center aims to treat the community as a patient rather than provide clinical care to individual patients given the large number of individuals afflicted with emotional illnesses in the community. And to do that, we uh, conduct local research uh, on the various mood disorders which revealed basically that the, the rates and the patterns of these disorders are the same uh, in, as in most other parts of the world. The single big difference between Hong Kong, Chinese communities and the West is in terms of what we call the treatment gap. In other words, we have a similar percentage of people with these problems, but the percentage of treatment among people afflicted is much lower in Hong Kong and in most Asian countries. We conduct uh, educational campaigns for the general public on the features, uh, uh, courses and treatment of these disorders. 
It's only for integrating neuroscience basic research findings into clinical studies that we are able to find the key to evidence-based intervention for the benefit of our patients.